Once I got there, I never wanted to leave. Yeah. When I heard he was retiring, it kind of, it hit me, you know, like, I was just like, you never, you never think of Harry retiring. It's like, you always think Santa Claus is going to be there. You always think Harry's going to be at Villanova. Everything I have is Villanova women's basketball, you know what I mean? Even the person I eventually married played for me. The hair, you know, the slick back hair to one side, you know, um, dressing better now. Hair is looking better now, less, but looking better. Like, when she always would stick her tongue out, when she would make a move, we went to play Providence. And um, he took me and my friend Sandy, who was on the Villanova team, who was in my wedding, to the dog tracks. And uh, we were sitting there, we went with them, and we were all excited. And, and Harry said, you better pray that Smoke and Sandy wins because all the meal money's on it. <laughs> and so we're like cheering, like, and Smoke and Sandy plays. Every time she was out there, she looked like she was giving birth. That's how hard she was playing. And the sweat would pour off of her like you've never seen before. I remember the ice skating trip with Harry. That was a lot of fun, seeing him skate and him trying to crab onto people like when he was falling. She used to come sometimes and pull my pants down like from behind, you know, because like I said, we, we were like relatively the same age, you know what I mean? And so that was always something. I always had to be careful out of practice. I always always be looking around. Where's Stephanie at, you know what I mean? Because she's always going to do something goofy. Growing up in Ocean City, New Jersey, Memorial Day weekend, you go from 10,000 to 100,000, you know, because it's a resort area. And fourth grade, playing against my mom, and I went to St. Augustine's grade school. We lost six to four. I came home and cried all night like a little baby because I couldn't believe we lost, you know, and I'll never forget that. That's when it really started. I started playing in fourth grade, and that's where the competitiveness started, and then I went to, obviously, Ocean City High School after St. Augustine's. Miss Pat Doherty was way ahead of her time. Like, we went 100 no in our league. Like, we were the toughest team around in the Cape Atlantic League. That's when I really started playing against guys. I was down the, at Ocean City, there's the Quartz 34th Street, and I was typically, once in a while my sister Coco would come, but typically I was, and Courtney once in a while, but typically I was the only girl down there, and that's the way I, I learned, get my shot blocked, get the ball stolen, you know, learn to fight back. Wasn't a lot of full-time coaches at the college level, so I was really thinking go phys ed. The re reason I originally went to Delaware before I transferred to Villanova is because I really admired my high school coach, so I wanted to be a phys ed teacher and a high school coach, because they're really... There really wasn't that buzz around college basketball other than, at that time, Maculata and Carol Blaze-Jowski and, you know, Queens. When I was in Lycoming, I had gotten hurt my, my freshman year, and the coach my sophomore year let me coach the JV team at Lycoming. So I was coaching guys my own age. Gotcha. So when I got out of Lycoming, like, everybody was like, I was amazed that I got the job at Villanova. I was only 22, but I had had three years coaching experience in, in, in basketball already bef before. So it, it worked out really well. And then when I got to Villanova, it didn't feel as strange because I was coaching guys my own age, you know, gotcha. at the, before I got there. Now, why, were we, why did you go into women's basketball? <clears throat> I, I graduated from Lycoming, and there was uh, an ad in the newspaper and I, I can't remember what school it was, but John Griffin, who was, uh, I played against him. He went to Roman. And, oh, it's Upper Darby. That's what, exactly what it was. It was Upper Darby. Boys' job was open. And I said to myself, I didn't apply because I thought I couldn't get it. Well, John gets the, gets the job. So I said to my mother, I said, you know, Mom, next job that comes in the paper, I'm going to apply for it. Well, the St. Joe and Villanova jobs kind of got posted in the newspaper the same day. Women's? Women's, yeah. So I, I applied for both. And you said... It was part-time. It didn't matter. I mean, it didn't, it didn't matter. matter. I just wanted to coach. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I thought maybe I would coach women for... If I got, was lucky enough to get a job, coach for a couple years. Okay. And then go, I wanted to be a high school teacher and a high school coach. That's what my, my goal was. Like my like Bernhard, who coached, who coached me, you know? So St. Joe's, I get a thank you, but no thank you. Villanova says, you know on in for an interview. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, okay. So I go in. Well, how about this? 
the woman's athletic director at Villanova's husband had played at Lycoming before I got there. Wow. So the Lycoming coach, his name was Dutch Birch. He gives me like a fantastic recommendation and she knows, she knows who he is. So I wind up getting the job. And here I am, 42 years later. Wow. It was amazing. I, I, never, I never wanted to leave after I got there. Dick Bernhardt was the disciplinarian and athletic director at Monsignor Bonner. He was Harry's high school coach. I got to know Bernie because my, my cousin, which was my, da my dad's twin brother's son, was at Bonner when his, my, my dad's twin passed away. So my dad took a role in that, and Bernie was involved. And that's when our relationship, but also Mr. Bernhardt had a, a house and a business down in Ocean City. Okay. So we got to know him through all that. He was the one that actually wanted me to go to Villanova originally, but I really was set on phys ed. Okay. And then he really was the, the buffer with Harry and told him about that I really wasn't happy at Delaware, and that's where the wheels kind of went. Back then, the tryouts were like at the end of your senior you know, like end of your okay. senior year. And you went to the tryout. Had, was that the first time you ever met Harry? Yes. Okay. Yes. But he knew about you. For uh, I mean, I I guess Mr. Bernhardt, you know, and so, I had gotten to know Harry, you know, because of that connection of Bonner with my cousins being from Bonner and Prendy. So, you know, I knew of Harry too as well. I do remember that try. I remember spraining my ankle, but you know, it was at the end of the workout and I had a pretty good workout and um and I remember being offered the fact that Villanova didn't have phys ed is what, you know, really was the, the, the key component. Otherwise, I would have gone to play for Harry. Tough conversation, because she said, oh, I got wind that you want to transfer. And I didn't want her to find out that way, because um, I really liked her. Um, she was a really good person. And, um, but I just, I was the type of kid that was in the gym every single day, and I didn't feel that was across the board with everybody there. A couple people were, but I was like, if I'm gonna be all in for four years, I need to be all in with everybody that's all in. You know, because I came from such a competitive high school program, I wanted to be somewhere that was similar. So did Harry come out? He came out to see me play at Delaware. She played forward. She, she was a four player for us. And uh, she could shoot the ball from the perimeter. She could handle a little bit. Um, she could play inside, outside. No, very intelligent player. Um, you know, and uh, she, she just was, you know, one of those kind of kids that could just do a little bit of everything. And uh, she was a very good defensive player, very good rebounder. She was like tenacious kind of a player. Lisa Ortlip was probably more skilled, but not as tenacious. Lisa was 6'4". So her and Stephanie were a perfect combination together. Because Stephanie would do all the dirty work. You know, and Lisa would get all the glory throwing hook shots, you know what I mean? So that's the way it worked. And you know, she just did a great job. And you know, she played almost every minute of the game. That, that five played a lot of minutes. He was so young. I laugh with the kids now that, that play for Villanova. I'm like, you got the, the mellow Harry, you know? And I've mellowed out over the years, you know what I mean? Harry, the thing I always loved is he always cared about you. Always approachable, you know, always easy to be around, funny, great sense of humor, um, but much more vocal, much more active. I was at the game a few weeks ago. He was very calm. Totally different. Totally different. Very active. Did he get on the refs a lot? Um, no, I don't think Harry was ever one. He would, he would pick his spots. I think it's what he does now too. He picks a spot. I don't think he's gonna, uh, you know, get too adamant with the officials. Basically, the same style of play as he has now. I mean, the, the motion, the spread, the reads. He was very read oriented, you know. Um, and, and he was a great. Te he's a great teacher of the game, you know. Like just understood, you know, like plays that were gonna happen before they even happen. Because I used to play pickup with Harry all the time. We used to go to the observatory or, or Bally Park and play against, you know getting pickup games and I love playing with Harry because Harry really knew how to play um, and that's how he coached too you could tell he, he he knew what he was doing so the things that I really recall is just him having a great knowledge of the game and but he would talk you through everything all right she's going to set a screen and she's going to do this and then you're going to be over the shot <laughs> you know so. her progress through Villanova was great I mean she was a good academic student uh, great personality great sense of humor you know and then you got to know you know her dad and her mom, we got to know her whole family. Because I would go down the shore in the su summer, okay. and I, I would go to Wildwood, but we would drive over to Ocean City, and we would play at 34th Street. Okay. Stephanie would be up there, ev eventually her husband, Frank. If you let it get to you, which it did at one point, got to me, but you, you had to learn to navigate through, you know, Harry's yelling and, and you know, and his little idiosyncrasies. But um, once you, I think it's like anything. Once you know a coach cares about you, 
that's fine. You know, you can overlook a lot of things. And so Harry always cared about us and you knew he'd always be there for you. So, you know, there might be days you walk away so angry because he's screaming and yelling, but then when you look back, you can realize, and I'd see it now more now because I'm a coach, is that it wasn't me, he was yelling, it was that person either missed the box out or did something stupid, you know? So I can understand and appreciate it now. I remember my junior year, I struggled with my junior year because I just, um, I hung on so tight and I remember I was like, oh, for December, I couldn't hit a shot and I was just like panicking and then the more Harry yelled, the more I got pa more panicky and then finally I broke through that. Interesting enough, my senior year was the year my mom got cancer and I, that was my best year because I kind of put basketball in perspective. I still worked around the clock getting better, but I had things in, in, in perspective at that point. Stephanie was so used to playing against guys that even when I used to have guys from, the, from, from Villanova, which we do now, she used to hold her own against the guys, like from a physical standpoint, or push them around. Like it was crazy. Played Rutgers in the regional, and we beat them. But they after the regional, we got there was a reseed. So that was that year. There was a split between AIAW and NCA. We went AIAW, and then it was Wayland Baptist, Texas with Jody Conrad, Rutgers, and Villanova. And so the coils were on, you know, Rutgers and, and then Chris Daly on Rutgers. And Rutgers had a really good team. So we knocked them out. And then we beat Seton Hall. Phyllis Mangina, who used to be the Seton Hall coach, we beat them in a really close game. So we advanced to the Final Four, and then we got to play Rutgers again. And we ended up losing to them in the, you know, in the semis. And then ended up beating, then they had a, a third-place game. We beat Wayland Bappas for third place. That was the start of the beginning of our Final Four team. Okay. Uh, it was her, Lisa Ortlip. I, then I recruited a kid named Kathy Boisold, Nancy Bernhardt, a kid named Andrea Burton. And... Those five were really good, and we wind up going to the Final Four of the AIAW. And the crazy part about it was, it was played in Philly, so like we didn't even get to go anywhere. I was telling somebody on the bus today, we took the R5 one day down to practice, down to the Plester. One of my favorite highlights was when we beat Maryland because we had a pretty um, experienced team. Our point guard was Andrea Burton, and Andrea was quiet. You know, she was one of my friends on the team, but she was really quiet. So when she came into that huddle at Merlin and actually like had a voice, we were so pumped. We were like, all right, now we're all in, you know, because we were trying to bring her in and like, let's go. I still remember when we played St. Joe's because we didn't lose a big five game when I was there. And that was something we took great pride in. And I remember we were playing St. Joe's in a really close game. Rini Dunn, who's now Rini Shields, was a really good player and I blocked her shot. And I remember Harry on the sideline going, she blocked the shot and she got possession. You know, it was at the end of the game. So it was like, a, I guess a big play, but um, we just had a lot of balance on our team. We had a really good team, like it's just an unselfish team. I don't think there was many bus, any other, many other schools where your boyfriend was on the bus with you going to the game. Frank would be on the bus with Stephanie. I used to laugh, I'd say to myself, I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh my God, he even let Frank stay in the room the one night. Well, I was with my roommate too, you know, it wasn't like we had our own rooms or anything. So um, just really different back then. I mean, he was really, because nothing was gonna happen. Frank drove up there and it was snowstorm, so he's not gonna let him drive back. So it's just, you know, common sense. I knew she wanted to coach and eventually she would go into coaching, you know what I mean? Because, she, let's put it this way, it was the perfect thing for her. Like. Like, like my mentor used to say to me, hey, you know, you were going to go into coaching someday. That's what he used to tell me. Well, I always used to feel that Stephanie would go into coaching. She was like a big deal in Ocean City, and the young kids would gravitate to her all the time. And you could just see the uh, camaraderie between her and, and younger people than her. I actually met with Kathy Rush, and I said, you know, I'm not sure what route to go. And she goes, well, if you have aspirations to go into college, start in college. So when I graduated from Villanova, I went became assistant at St. Joe's. There was a lot of times when she was at St. Joe's, she would be recruiting the same kids I would, you know what I mean? So we would always have to, you know, it just felt weird, I guess, that you're, you're recruiting against a kid who just helped you get to the Final Four, you know? But it was fun, you know what I mean? And we, like you said, the camaraderie just built that way. What are you doing? Like, what do you think about this? Or you think maybe we play these guys' own? Or we used to use some of Bernhardt's stuff, her and I, same kind of defense, zone defense that he taught to me, talk to Stephanie. So we would talk th about things like that and everything. He's who I played under, and look at me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a head coach now. So yeah, of course there was that light moment of like, well, you know, a little bit of intimidation the first time you play it, because you're just like, he's the teacher and I'm the student, you know? So, but then the first time you win that, you know, you're just like, 
oh, you taught me well. How many times have you guys coached against each other? At least 10 times, because he was at St. Joe's okay. for a while, and that was part of the big five. Gotcha. And we didn't beat them very much, I'll tell you that right now. All our games were close. All our games were wars. All our games, games were typically decided in the last four minutes. They hit a three to put the game into overtime and then won the game in overtime. I remember that game. They hit a three at the buzzer. We didn't switch the screen, but I remember they ran a screen down play. How was the last game? I mean, the red you guys could play in a tournament. Yeah. Knowing this was the last one was kind of weird, kind of eerie, and you know, but at the same time, you know, we both came in 0-3, you know, we're both still trying to find our way. I think we both now have learned a lot from that time. I think we're both moving in the right direction now. Um, but it was, uh, it was definitely a little different. Looking down the sidelines and being like, hmm, I wonder what he's gonna call now. I can read his mind. <laughs> really? You really think of that? <laughs> well, I, I'm like, he's going to call a timeout now, and he's going to go flare for someone, you know, like, whatever. You know, I can start to pick up, like, his what his tendencies are on certain things. Of course, I wouldn't know exactly who he's running, but at least I have an idea just because of, I think, I think similarly. I guess I say it's bittersweet, you know, I'm like, in some ways, I know I'm, I'm at the end of the line, you know what I mean, like my body's breaking down, so I know it's time to go, but in the other way, like you had said, you know, you, you want to try to hang in there, but you, but you have to know when to let go, you know what I mean, and uh, I think it's time. Everything I have is going over women's basketball, you know what I mean, even the person I eventually married played for me, really? you know what I mean, yeah, we got married like, I think seven years after she graduated, wow. she lived near me. So after she graduated, we started hanging out, just hanging out. We didn't even know we were going out with each other for the first three years, you know what I mean? So it's crazy. It's everything I have is because of that. When I heard that, it was just, uh, it really took me back, got a little emotional, you know, and I obviously reached out to him right away and told him how thankful I was that he was in my life, you know, both on and off the court. And Harry's developed such a group of people that have been loyal to him and stayed with him. And I think that speaks volumes of him. I'm going to try to volunteer as much time as I can at the grade school that's in my parish okay. where, my, where my sons went to school. So I'm going to try to like volunteer there. I, I might even try to student teach a little bit there because I, I have a secondary ed degree and I have a master's degree in education. So I might volunteer my time so they don't have to pay somebody. It's always a sense of pride. I have, I have her in coaching. I have um, Denise Dillon at Drexel who played for me. So it's always great when you see a kid that played for you go into coaching, you know what I mean? Or just go into anything that, that, that you know that she's a focal point of something, you know what I mean? And she's responsible for people and she's going to really take care of people. I just would laugh at my memories of like, if I'd hit an open shot, I'd be like, I got that shot for you. I set you up for that shot. I got you that shot. That would either be playing pickup or when he was coaching me and like the play came back and I got the shot. It'd be like, you know, oh, I set that up. I took care of that for you. And you just kind of smile and laugh with them and just say, okay, you, you did. You're right. Yeah, you, you, you got that hair. But um, all good, you know, all good memories, you know, like, because, and I go, I go back to it. And the thing I learned from him is he cared about you. So I never forgot that. Like I said, Frank's in a snowstorm. Hey, he can stay, you know, like he always put you first, you know, and always did the right thing. You know, and I, memories I remember that are really, I cherish, are going to his house for Christmas dinner with his mom cooking these big Italian feasts. Um, that was so special. He was such a family guy. He, I remember him coming over to my house after his mom passed and he really, really was struggling. And him and I talking about that. Um, but he was always there for any of us that went through our own times. Like when I lost my dad, I was coaching at, at um, you know, St. Joe's, and I remember Karen Hargan was a senior when she lost her mom, so he was really great at getting you through the tough times, and then he could always, he knew he could count on us when he was going through the tough times, so I think that's, that's what a coach and a friend, friend are.